Hi, listeners. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by The Draw Shop, and we've got something exciting for you. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been asked what you do? We all get asked this, right? Have you then answered and then got the response of totally glazed over eyes or just the look of someone politely smiling but definitely not caring? It sucks. I know. I've totally been there on both sides, actually. That's why my team and I at The Draw Shop now offer a service to help you perfect your elevator pitch so that people immediately understand how you can make their life better and so that you can use this anywhere in your marketing. It's the single statement that compels your prospects to take action right away. Here's what happens. You meet with an expert copywriter on our team to define the problem you solve, how you solve it, and the transformation your customers experience after working with you. From there, we'll turn that into a short and sweet elevator pitch just for you and create a compelling one-page visual story to help the world better understand your business and how you can help them. For a special limited time offer, we are offering you this service for one-third the usual price, valued at $1,500. Yep, 70% off. Again, this will only be available for a limited time, and we've already seen incredible results with our clients changing this one single statement. So to get your word perfect pitch today, head to www.thedrawshop.com forward slash elevator pitch now. That's www.thedrawshop.com forward slash elevator pitch. Okay, let's get into today's episode. The goal is to turn this name and email that you've received into a customer. We can't just hope that they loved what you gave them so much that they're going to say, hey, you know what? Yes, I'm going to buy from this person. You've planted the seed that you offer value. And even if they are thinking, wow, that was so great and valuable, and they're wondering what you might sell, they still might not do that. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode on building your high-performing marketing and sales funnel. If you've been following along, the last couple of episodes were determining your high-value, irresistible offer that is risk-free to prospects for the purpose of gaining trust with you and your brand and getting them into your sales funnel so that you can convert them into a buying customer. The last episode, we talked about the ad that you will create to get them to the landing page where they will give you their contact information, name and email usually, in exchange for your super valuable offer. And today we're talking about what happens after they received your high value, irresistible offer. You've got their name and email or whatever information you asked for, but now what do you do? They've now become an official prospect, somebody that is now in your funnel, someone that opted for more information from you. Well done. You now get to market to them via email. So they've entered their name and email. They then get their free offer, however you choose to deliver that. Maybe they get it in their email after they hit submit. Maybe it's an immediate download after they hit submit. Or maybe it's an email confirming a phone call that they're going to have with you or a calendar link where they can book that call with you. However it is that they're receiving it, they've hit that submit button after they entered their name and email. They're probably then redirected to a thank you page. This is where you can say thank you, or you can actually present an actual paid offer to them. That is an option. I would test both. It could be a small upsell, or this page could just have text or a thank you video from you, or it could have both of those things. This page can also bring them to another page where you can ask for even more information from them. For example, if you primarily sell via the phone and you are a financial planner, perhaps after giving them their guide on the pitfalls to avoid when hiring a planner, you offer here another risk-free value add, which would be the phone call with you. Now, I've mentioned a lot that of the big pie that you are pitching to, there's about 3% that is ready to take action and buy. And this is where those people come in. They will 
probably want to take advantage of this. They liked the free offer and they're going to make sure that they they click to book that appointment. But others might still not be ready and they need to read the full report that you sent them first. Or maybe they need to get a series of five or six emails before they're ready to book that call. We're about to dive into that. But remember, you're building a pipeline here. So you, you don't, you're not just trying to get those ready to buy. Those people are great. You really want to nurture the others until they're ready because that's more of the pie for you. That 3% is going to be easier. But the whole purpose of this is to talk to that 97% who haven't made a move yet. And how do we get them to make a move? The good news is, is that they've at least experienced interest enough that they have a problem and you most likely can solve that problem or they wouldn't have raised their hand for your high value irresistible offer. And so what's really important now is what you do with these people that aren't ready yet to take that next step. This is where you get to bring them more value. Now, I just mentioned that on that thank you page, you have the opportunity to give them something and immediately upsell them on something, I would say, at a very low price point. Maybe it's a very low price point ebook. But a lot of these people really just want that free thing. A lot of these 97% just want that free thing. So the real value here is not what you're going to get from that small upsell offer. It's really about getting their name and email as a lead into your funnel. Okay. So what we're going to do now is create an automated nurturing email sequence. I'm going to trust that you have some type of a CRM or something where you can collect these names and you can then send out an automated email sequence. So the goal is to turn this name and email that you've received into a customer. We can't just hope that they loved what you gave them so much that they're going to say, hey, you know what? Yes, I'm going to buy from this person. You've planted the seed that you offer value. And even if they are thinking, wow, that was so great and valuable and and that they're wondering what you might sell, they still might not do that. Let me give this example because this totally happens to me. So I'll be reading something and I'm like, wow, this was really great. I might totally take advantage of the freebie that somebody is offering me and I get excited and it's awesome and I might start reading it and I either put it away to read later and then totally forget about it or I read this and learned so much that I'm ready to take action. But then I'll get a text message from say someone on my team who's like, hey, I really need X, Y, and Z, and I need it urgently. So I stop what I'm doing and I get all wrapped up in whatever this urgent issue is. And then I'm like, okay, am I going to go back to that? But then something else grabs my attention. It'll be like my my daughter who's home studying and she's asking if she can order Chick-fil-A or something via Postmates. And I'm like, no. Anyways, this is the kind of stuff that happens to me. But it's true. And all of a sudden, I've just been bombarded with all these different squirrels and I didn't do a good enough job at protecting my time. And so I've gotten distracted. And I'm saying like a lot of people get this way because now instead of going back to that, I realize that there's this other thing that I really needed to do or I really needed to answer this person via email or, oh my gosh, my three o'clock appointments popping up now. And all of a sudden I'm consumed by all of these different things. And the thing that really got my attention before because it was super valuable is now falling down to the bottom of the list. It's like not a priority anymore and it's not that important. And this is actually how so many businesses lose those leads that are in that 97%. The ones that aren't quite sure yet, the ones that didn't buy now or take advantage of your flash offer or whatever that was, they're the people that were actually a good interested lead that could be nurtured into being a customer, but they've let them go because they figure, you know what, if they really want it bad enough, they'll come back. And that's honestly what they think. That's really what's happening. And so they don't engage with them anymore and they just let them fall. They've given that thing to them and then they're gone. The thing is, is that as business owners, we are so inundated with emails and attention-consuming tasks. We actually need something to be in front of our face and we need to be reminded if it's not on our list of things to do or it's not sitting there right in front of us. Sometimes it has to be like 
seven times in front of us before we finally take action. We just don't. We just let it fall. I mean, have you ever had those conversations where it's people that are like, we should really form a strategic partnership together. Let's let's do this thing. You come up with this great idea. But then no task is created for that. No reminder is sent and you forget about it. And it's not because it wasn't a good idea. It's because you just simply weren't reminded of it. So that's what I want you to think about this automated sequence and why you're nurturing is because we don't want them to forget about you because you actually have something that's really valuable that's going to help them. And you actually owe it to them to not let them forget. So for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to keep this idea of nurturing them to email, but you can do this if you are somebody who does text message marketing, SMS marketing, or if you do everything via phone calls, however you are connecting with your audience, this really does apply to them as well. But I'm just using email, the email automated sequence for the purpose of this conversation and to keep it simple. But depending on your audience and however it makes best sense to do the offering you have, it might be all of them. Some people do all of those things, then apply it to that. But really what I want you to hear is what type of copy and content needs to be inside of these emails. The purpose is to move them through the customer journey. So this automated sequence is the method that you have to continually let them know that you have something they need. And each email should bring them closer to buying, if not that first one. But you want to have about a series of five to six so that you can include all of these things because some people do need to see things that many times. Sometimes they need to get emails from you seven times before they open up that first one. This is, this is the world we live in today is that people are getting contacted so many times. So it's really about getting their attention and getting an emotional response from them. What you're essentially doing is keeping a relationship with them for as long as you need to without being any sort of a risk to them because they can keep reading your emails and get more and more value each time without having to spend anything yet, without having to spend anything yet. So we have found in our business that a five to six email sequence is most effective with that final email being a sales letter, but it can be an email form or it actually directs them to a landing page with a, with a longer sales letter. But that one is ultimately the one that will close the deal and turn that lead into a buying customer or take that action that you want them to take. So to make this successful, here are the things through tons of studying. If you've been listening to me for a while, if you know who I am, you know that my background is in copywriting, which is why starting The Draw Shop was so thrilling for me because I'm all about proper messaging and really effective, powerful messaging. And so these are the things that really work well in studying our metrics and email opens and what people respond to. These are the things that we have applied, learning from tons of different experts. These are the things that really get people to, to pay attention. And it's because you're speaking to the emotion. So each email of these six, five to six, really need to offer awesome value. And sometimes value is, you know, it, it might be quick, simple advice. Well, let me, let me go into and tell, tell you what those things could be. So at least one email should have some empathy and understanding of their pain. You want to let them feel that you understand what they are going through and that it's why you offer your solution. Think about it when you've bought something before and when you feel that that person you are buying from or that brand that you are buying from, when you feel like they get it, they acknowledge what you've been through, what you're going through, what that pain is, you become more connected to them and you kind of automatically feel like if you know you totally relate to how hard that problem is, your solution must be the one because you you just you just get it. For us, you know, we do understand. We we've been there where it's really frustrating when people don't understand what you do. And it's why we created a formula and a science back method to creating copy and video content that makes messages impossible to understand. 
that's that's why we created our company. And so when we write our copy and we put out our messages in our emails, we really want to speak to that problem because we know what it's like. We know what it's like when people are just like, oh, you're just like everyone else or what makes you different. So we get that across in our emails, that empathy point. The second, one of the emails should really address skepticism. Something we ask our clients a lot when we go through our creative brief process with them before we write copy is what are the objections that people typically have when working with you or even when working with your industry? Is it price? Is it trust? Is it a lengthy process? Like what makes people apprehensive about working with your industry? What are the things that hold them back and go, yeah, but... Like if you're in the diet industry, objections could be, if I'm going to sign up for this plan, I don't want to feel hungry. I always feel hungry on a diet. Or I don't want to have hard times in social situations and feel awkward. Or is it going to be really hard for me to find the ingredients and make these recipes? You get it, right? So what you want to have in at least one of these emails is where you're actually speaking to those objections. And many skilled copywriters will say this. You want to enter the conversation that people are already having in their mind. Because when you've done that, they really feel understood. They really feel that connection. And if you can answer an objection before they've even had a chance to ask you about it, you've actually built trust without even realizing it. Okay, another email should have education. Just really educate them on your industry, on whatever it is that your your service or your product is a solution to. So if you're a financial advisor, you could give really useful tips that can help them in making decisions and maybe some other areas in their life that is related to their financial plan. Maybe not the big thing that you're going to help them with, but just little things that can make them go, oh, you know what? I actually learned a lot right there and I, I had no idea about that. Educate them. Going into the fourth one here, another email should offer a whole new perspective. What I mean by that is so many of us are stuck in there's only one way to do something. There's right or or wrong. And I'll give you an example here. A podcast episode got my attention from the title because it was basically talking about how you should actually always rent wherever you live and stop fixate being a homeowner. And my whole life and upbringing was about as soon as you can own your own home. Not that renting was a bad thing, but it was just like you will have much more security. It's a smart financial decision. You should own your home. It is far superior to renting. And the whole podcast shifted my mindset because what it talked about, and it was coming from a very successful person who was very wealthy, had this really great insight on why he will always rent the home that he lives in. And he had all of these really great reasons. And we still own our home, but it definitely made me think of things in a whole different way. Like, oh, wow, I I never thought about that. It made me pay attention. And this is a really cool thing to do because it puts you in this position of authority because you've you've taught them something that they don't know. You've you've shifted their mindset and you can do this in just about any industry if you think about it. I'm sure you have that where there are myths and you can totally bust that myth in this email. Okay, the fifth one is to include case studies. Include testimonials. And this is something, so I put this as a standalone email because you can talk specifically about a story or a case study, but you can also do this as a PS. You could have a PS or you could just have a little sign off where it is a testimonial of one of your clients. And if you don't yet have testimonials or you don't have a case study, you can absolutely talk about yourself and how this worked for you. Doing this elevates trust in your leads, in your prospects, because they're like, wow, now I can see how this actually worked for someone else. And I relate to this person. It builds your authority as a leader in your industry. And if you do have case studies, I always encourage people 
to collect those case studies, collect those testimonials. It is part of our our whole process when working with our clients. We collect all of that so that you consistently have this content and you can show people how well. And the more that they see that, they go, wow, if it worked for them, it can totally work for me. And it kind of does the selling of your service or product for you without you having to be like, look how great I am. And then the last one is really taking all of those aspects. So taking that empathy, answering those objections, educating them, offering them a whole new perspective, and proving to them through case studies or testimonials how this works. If you can do all of that together and create a sales letter, like a short sales letter, that can really hit home and convert them into a buying customer. Now they've learned all of this in a series of maybe that took five weeks for them to get those emails and they're reading them and each time they're developing a little bit more trust and like I said some will develop it sooner some still might not after this and that's okay speaking of the sales letter I am going to get into that later on another episode so that I can give you a formula that you can use that really takes all of these things and puts them together so you have a really strong awesome formula for a sales letter that you can use. Another thing, I mentioned the PS for a testimonial or a case study, but don't be afraid to put in a PS on all of these that has a call to action, especially if you have maybe a limited time offer or you want to give them a chance to book a call with you. It's a way to insert a call to action that is really a soft call to action, not not too pushy. It can just be, you know, if, if you'd like to hear more about this, you can book a call here. By the way, as I'm saying that, I'm also a really big fan of repurposing content. Everything that you include in these emails can also make really great blog posts. They can make great social media posts or even Facebook lives, Instagram lives, YouTube lives, wherever you, whatever platforms you are on, it's a great place. So if you do have a great case study, highlight it in your social media. If you really do understand and you've been there where your potential customer has been, tell your story on social media. So you may have already done these things and then you can just pull from them and put them into these emails. But I love being able to take things like that and repurpose it because sometimes people are someone might be following you on Facebook, but not at all on Instagram. Somebody might look at you on YouTube, but not at all on Facebook. So it's okay to repurpose content. It doesn't mean that somebody's seeing the same thing everywhere, if that makes sense. And also you can repeat it. So even in these emails, if you have another sequence that you need to write for something else, or you have another way that you're sending out newsletters and you want to include these stories, you can totally do that repurpose that content. I mean, you probably have so much great stuff. It's a shame to only let it be seen once. Okay. So all of these parts coming together have the purpose of converting that lead into a customer. But does that mean they're going to convert all of them? Does that mean all of those 97% are going to convert into a customer? No, it doesn't. And And they won't all convert. But I can tell you this, if you aren't doing this, and if you don't have a sales funnel in place, then implementing this, as we've discussed on these past episodes, will dramatically, and when I say dramatically, I mean so freaking dramatically, they will so dramatically increase your bottom line. Like your conversion rate will go up so much higher than you have experienced by implementing this sales funnel. Will it take some work? Yes, it will take some work. But like the results are so good and I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. You can get even more sophisticated with different sales funnels, with different things. But if you don't have this in place, this is just like, oh my gosh, the difference that it makes is incredible. You can just keep nurturing those people and build your list even if they didn't buy after that six email. Send out your newsletter, send out a new campaign. If they are staying subscribed to your email list, then they are still interested. If they are disinterested enough to unsubscribe, they will unsubscribe. In our business, 
we have subscribers from two years ago, sometimes even more, that have been like, we've been following and reading your content for years. We're now ready to work with you. It happens. <laughs> I know that sounds like a long time, but I'm just saying most of us have been focusing on that top 3%. So if this 97% takes months longer, maybe even two years, if you have this cranking all of the time, you're always going to have people coming in at different phases. And that's an awesome thing. It's a really awesome thing. I know firsthand because that is what we do in our business. And it's awesome. Those customers that are still opening your email, but haven't taken action, they, they might need a little bit more time. Maybe it's a financial thing that they can't commit to yet. Maybe for them, it takes them a little bit longer to build trust. Maybe, maybe they needed to date a lot longer and maybe even have a long engagement before, before marrying you. And that's totally okay. I mean, some do act more quickly, but guess what? If we didn't have our sales funnel in place, in my business in the draw shop, we would miss out on all of that 97% of the pie. And that's a lot. When you start to see this thing cranking, once you have it in place, you realize how much you would have missed out on. How much money you are leaving on the table. Like you're getting these people into your funnel, into your email list alone is so valuable. In fact, I could really go into this, and I am going to go into it on another episode, the value of your email list, and I highly recommend Amy Porterfield in terms of learning how to build your email list, but there's something that she says, and it is so, so true. So many of us focus on getting followers on Facebook and Instagram and social media and YouTube and all of that, and that's great, and you can obviously monetize that. It's wonderful. You can connect with your audience there, but just remember that Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, those platforms, they are the ones that own those names. They could shut down at any time, probably unlikely, but it could happen. And those people would be gone. But when you have an email list, you own those names and you can continue to market to them and to speak to them. And this whole entire strategy of bringing them into your sales funnel also brings people into your list that you can market. If you do affiliate marketing, you can market to them that way. So went off on a little tangent there, but I just want you to think about that and why, why there is so much value here. Do not underestimate the power of your sales funnel and your email list. And that's really all that I have to say today. I wanted to go through those emails. I wanted you to learn what should be in those emails. And I hope that this was helpful. And I hope that this caused some type of shift in your sales and marketing mindset. And on my next series, I am going to talk about actually making the sale. So this will be one for you to listen out for if you're someone who sells on the phone or has a long sales cycle. If you have a more customized product or service that you offer, you're not going to want to miss this because what I'm going to talk about is the stuff that changed everything for our sales team and dramatically increased our conversion rate because of the things that we implemented. So I want to share that with you. And even if you do sell with a just click now, if you're in e-commerce or whatever other types of selling that you do, I guarantee you'll still find some really valuable information. So until then, I'm Summer Felix Mulder, and I really thank you guys so much for listening. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you haven't already done so, would you do me a favor and go subscribe and review this podcast? My goal is to continue to deliver you content that will really move the revenue needle in your business and give you up-to-date content on anything else that can dramatically help your business. You can also find us at thedrawshop.com slash podcasts where you can comment on the podcast or contact us directly with any issues you'd like me to address. Thanks again. I really, really appreciate you listening and I'll see you next time.